This is my new mini crosscut sled. I am exceedingly happy with it. However, this video is not about the crosscut sled, but the little flip stop that I made for it. If you hang around to the end of the video, I'll go into detail how you can win your own CNC or gift cards from Inventables, and the best news is it's open to international entries. So the cut for this was pretty good. I had to drill uh, one hole for the lock nut. I did have a few issues when I resized the fence, just a few millimeters that I had to cut out uh, this section here so it actually sit properly. And that works well, but there is one major flaw with this type of flip stop. It has too much play. I'd rather eliminate all the play that I can. Now this is a problem that not all commercial flip stops actually solve either. There are probably three different ways we can go about it. This bracket piece here, the arm's not the problem, the bracket piece is, we could make that bigger and have two screws to lock it down. A little bit less convenient in terms of everyday use, but not that bad, particularly these uh, little brass ones are quite easy to manipulate and you only need to undo it a little bit to actually get it to slide freely. And I think that's a good approach. The other option is to mill a T shape into this block, we'll call this the lock block that sits slightly in the T-track itself. That way it actually won't be able to rotate at all. And that is a very good option. I think combining the two is actually also a very good option. The final option I'm not quite as much of a fan of, but it would work is to have a piece that extends past the back of the fence. That way it can't rotate because it's locked in both directions, sort of as you lower the flip stop, it locks in. A couple of errors that I've had to correct using some hand tools, but they were all design issues. So first up, the stem here that goes into the T-track, or more importantly, the areas that got carved away, I had set that to too deep. So I set that to two millimeters, but on this T-track that actually extended down past the lip. So when the T-track bolt was being pulled up, it was actually resting on the underside of this. So it wasn't making a very secure connection and it would wobble around. So I just planed off a little bit with a uh, block plane and we're in business again. The other issue was I made this stem just a hair too big. Uh, and again, just a block plane and some sandpaper fixed that up. But that goes in really well. There's a tiny bit of twist there or wriggle in there. Uh, so if that was a better machined fit, would not have that. You can see here, uh, that's loose, slides nice and easily. Just a tiny little bit of wriggle. When I tighten that down, mostly gone, but you can hear just a tiny amount. So this still does need two bolts. Then when we add the second bolt and nut, there is no wriggle whatsoever. Next issue to address, once I remill this part, is how to actually attach it to the flip stop portion. When I milled out the original version, I had it something like that. So I could precisely place those holes uh, in the block and then I had to drill the one that the bolt for the T-track went through. Not a big deal for that one, but these ones have to be relatively accurate for them to actually work. So what I can do is put this in place, get the flip stop section or flip stop arm, hold that in position. I've got a eight millimeter bread point bit in. That's given me a point there to drill. Now, if I was making a whole bunch of these, I'd make up some sort of jig or fixture to hold it on the CNC to actually drill it that way, or even at the drill press. I'm only gonna be making one or two of these prototypes and then the actual thing. So drill press with a hand screw clamp actually is a really easy way to drill this straight and safely. So that wasn't great drilling. Uh, all the MDF burst out the back there. That is actually a straight hole, but I wasn't clearing the sawdust quick enough. So the pressure from that dust and the drill bit burst out. Good thing is that tells me that I should add more material to the back of it. So it's a little bit uh, less dicey. So I'm going to do a full prototype test in MDF now. Uh, I'll redesign those parts with a little bit more allowance uh, for the bolt hole at the back, a little bit less depth of cut for the groove hugger section and fix up a couple of the issues I had with the arm, namely the space in the corner.
was happy with the results so I went straight to the final product. HDPE doesn't clear so well with a 1 8 inch single float upcut bit, so an 18 volt blower was called into action. A jigsaw blade holder helps cut away the HDPE tabs. I found it was easier to measure and mark out the location to drill than use the bread point. 8mm up from the underside and 12.5mm in from the back. Come to sinking all the hole and deburring all the edges was necessary as HTB can be really sharp. So you might have noticed a small change to design. I added a little bumper the same width as a nylon washer that I'm using. If we look at the hardware, we've got a 5 16th inch T-bolt and screw, and then it's M8 bolt, washers, and a lock nut holding it all together. The lock nut is nice because I can adjust how much tension it requires to actually move the flip stop. One design thing that's interesting in that it's not how I planned it but it's actually worked out pretty well is the general shape of this arm. Now originally I thought oh with thin stock I'll bump up the arm like that but with this curve and angle it doesn't quite work. Then I thought but I actually don't use that feature on the flip stops I have that have that feature so why do I care? However I realized that, that actually makes a really good clamp for small pieces. I can hold the flip stop down hold the piece in place rather than using a pencil with an eraser on it and hoping for the best. It's also nice to have a look at the various iterations. So this was the first attempt with the uh, rather anemic sized locking block getting closer to what the final product ends up looking like and then we've got the little bumper that sticks out there as well as very subtle changes on the flip arm. Now all up I've probably got maybe an hour and 10 minutes or so carving all of these pieces out, not just the finished product. The finished product took about 20 minutes, but the whole lot, all the uh, prototyping stage, only took about an hour and a half. It's probably spent more time setting up the stock and clamping it down. So why is the cut time relevant? Well, this is part of Inventable's competition they've got running at the moment, the Power Hour in Easel. So the idea is that you design something using Easel that can be cut out in an hour or less, and you go into the draw to win grand prize, an X-Carve, or a $100 voucher to use in the Inventable store. The exciting part of that is it's open to international entries, which a lot of competitions aren't, so you can win uh, X-Carve no matter where you are in the world. You don't have to already have a CNC, you don't actually have to cut out all the parts, you just have to submit a design made with Easel, which is free web-based software, so you don't even have to install anything. There's more information in the links below where you can enter the contest and see all the T's and C's. I'll also include links to the easel project for this flip stop, but if you've got a CNC that doesn't use easel, I'll include links to the SVG and DXF files as well. Thanks for watching.